In this video, we're going to create some hidden paper clips. I received this altar, compos altar composition book, if I can say it. I received this altered composition book from Colleen, a member of my Facebook group and actually the administrator of my Facebook group or an administrator of my Facebook group. She just does a great job and has so graciously agreed to help facilitate conversation and, and so forth within the group. When I was doing the Altered Composition book series, she sent me one of these to share with me that I had inspired her to try. And inside of hers, and I use hers uh, all the time. I use it to keep notes, to um, utilize it for ideas that I have to make videos. But she had these two little clips that she had put inside that reflect her artwork, her gel press prints, they're beautiful, and they're hidden paper clips. And it took me a long time to figure out exactly how she did that. And I'm stubborn, so I'm not going to ask. I'm just going to look and ponder and, and try to figure it out. So I think I figured it out. And I'm going to share with you how I am going to make some of those clips quick and easy from index cards that I have dyed in coffee. So these are all coffee stained index cards that were just in my last batch of coffee stained papers. So let's get started. Let me, oh I want to flip this over and show you the back of this too because this is just another wonderful piece of her art and inside she'd done some beautiful prints, created some pockets, there's a pocket in the front as well, and I, you, you know, I store my stamps and a few things in here. I mean, this is beside me all the time on my ch at my chair in my living room, and I, I love it, and I use it, and I am so grateful that it was sent to me. It's, it's beautiful. So let me set that aside, and let's get started here. And I'm just going to choose, that one looks good right there. So let's choose this one to make a hidden paper clip. I'm gonna fold it quickly in half and use my bone folder just to really secure that crease. Then I shall bring my paper cutter in and cut this down to two inches. So here we go. And mine's going to look different than, than Colleen's, but I think that there's all kinds of videos on YouTube, probably, on how to do these hidden paper clips. So I'm sure there's a lot of different variations out there. And I think I need a new um, blade on my cutting tool. So I'm just going to kind of trim off some of those fuzzies. And I also want to pull in my crocodile. And I am going to use a shorter clip. So I'm going to trim off just a little bit of this one inch piece and go with the one fourth inch crop. And just crop that both. I also think that I'm going to make this rounded as well. So that's all I'm going to need that for. So let me put it up. And now I want to create a little bit of a background for this. So I have a strip stamp that I like to use for that. And I know I have it out and it's right here. And I think what I'm going to do is because I have chosen this little 
stamp that is a little girl. I'm going to use a tattered rose background. So let's just ink the stamp up a bit. And we'll put this so that the writing is readable. Well, it's not really readable, but at least we can distinguish that it is right side up. And you can see that in the background, I hope. I hope that's in focus. I'm going to just re-ink and do it on the other side. And we'll do it, um, eh, I don't know if we will or not, on the back of the one inch piece. So this is my thought process. And I think I will choose a, I don't know if I want to go around that with a light thistle. Yeah, I kind of think I do. I'm just going to go around the edges of this with this thistle. Thistle. This is tattered rose. With the tattered rose. So we're giving it kind of that little bit of feminine feel. Maybe come in just a little bit here and there. So what do you think? I think I'm liking that. All right. Now for this, I think I'll just really give it a tattered rose background. So this is going to fit over the top of that. We'll choose this side. Maybe because we have this little tear we should choose that side. I don't know. I think I might cover that tear up and use this side. I also have one from a previous make that I could use. See where I'm having issues? I don't like that tear. And two of the index cards must have been stuck together when I pulled Pulled it, and I pulled them apart and tore that paper. So let's just remedy that by grabbing one that I had left over from my previous make. And we'll start from scratch. And this is lighter, so I think that could be a good thing. There we go. So I'm I'm liking the way that's looking. Let's go around the outside edges of this. And once we have that complete, we can clip the paper clip on. So the paper clip I'm putting the long side to the front, it doesn't really matter because I'm also going to decorate the back, but I just want to make sure that it's nice and straight on there. And now I'm going to get my little girl. And do I want to use a vintage photo for her or do I want to do her in black? I think I want to do her in vintage photo. Let's look first here. And eh, that's not really coming off well enough to see it. Let's really ink that up and see what happens here. I think she needs to be in black because she's just not visible enough in the vintage photo. And I had left my black out. I didn't cover it up when I last left my workbench. So hopefully this hasn't dried up to the point where we can't use it. And it has. 
Let's see if we have another one. There we go. Don't you hate when you do that? I can probably re-ink it, but let's set that aside for now. We know that that needs some work. Still not coming off as dark as I want. Well, let's give it a go. Giving her a good, firm, hard press. And there she is. So she did come out pretty darn good. So that is how that little girl will attach to my hidden clip. Let's turn around and put her on the back as well. <clears throat> this stamp I received from Craspire. They sent me one of their monthly um, packages. Let's get her. stamped on the back. So now she just needs to be glued into place. So <clears throat> let's grab the glue and glue her down. That would be, that, that's another thing that I did. I, I must have left in a hurry because I left without covering up my ink pad. I left without Closing my glue, which, you know, it's, it's going to be stuck. And I left my workbench a total disaster. And I don't normally do that. I usually clean up before I leave. So, my husband must have called me for dinner or something. And I ran, ran like the wind to get out of here. And now we have that unfettered. I'm going to put a little around the paper clip <clears throat> just for a little extra security. And which one of these did I want on the long side? That one. So let's just position that and fold it over and wipe off the mess we just made here. So there is the beginning of that, and I think that's really soft and, and feminine. So to kind of set that off, I have a couple of pieces of cheesecloth, and I think I'll trim that down just a little bit so it doesn't overwhelm. And we'll put that down with a little piece of this linen on top of it. And once again, trim it down just a little so it's not overwhelming. And then we have these little bits. So let's cut this little bit. Let's do this. Let's stamp that with an X. Yeah. You think that would look good? Let's stamp that with an X on the lined side. There we go. And 
that might be kind of big. Let's do something smaller. Maybe just cut right off at that line. And I will grab my box of small little stamps here. It's a K. And ooh, let's find a number. There's a three. Three is always a good number. So let's put a three on that. There's my three. That I like. So let's dab a little glue there for the cheesecloth and the now a little bit of glue on the back of this. And there. Maybe that little girl is just three. So we can flip that over and do the same on the back. So we'll simply glue cheesecloth. Let's trim down the linen and cut ourselves a smaller piece of this coffee stained. I think we needed it that small. Oh, there it is. Let's grab that three. So there, there is the front, there is the back. Now I want to put a little tie and I have this kitchen string out. And let's just find the end to that. And I'm gonna just position this up inside there so that it is tight at the top of that clip. And I'm gonna go ahead and make this pretty long. So I'm gonna have lots of scrap left over, but I have an idea for this side. What I think will look good. And oops, I pulled too tight. So we will cover that up with our knot. Okay, let's just glue that knot down. To keep that from tearing any further. And maybe we'll fray the edges of this. That's what I was thinking. So that it was a nice little fringy, frayed, like this. I think we're going to have to cut that shorter. But let's get it. I feel like I need a comb or something. Kind of comb those. Here we go. I think maybe about right there. I don't want it to take over. Now 
I think the next time I'm out, I need to invest in more scissors. I think I've pretty much glued up every pair I have. You know, you always have that pair that you say, okay, this is for paper only, no glue. And then you have it in your hand, and there's glue on the paper, and you go ahead and use them. And then they become no longer the defined there. I like that. I think it, oh, that's still attached. There. So that is one index card utilized to create a hidden paper clip. And if we pull this over, we can put that right on there like that. So what do you think? You think that it turned out pretty darn good? Let's take a look at it and whoops. Side. Let's open him up just a little bit. Get it a go. And that I think would look good inside your journals. So there is Colleen's beautiful version with her gel press printed papers. And I made one a little smaller with my index card. So I think all three turn out nice. I like these. I like the size. I like the use of her gel press printed paper. You can see I used her idea of the tie on the top. She did it on both. She touched a little charm on this one and glued it down. But hers are just absolutely lovely. And I wanted to learn how to do that. So I chose to use these index cards because I didn't want to sacrifice any of my paper until I knew what I was doing. So each side is imprinted exactly the same. Sometimes love is a dancer in the dark Spinning left and twirling through the back door Sometimes love